Hello. Today I'm looking at a class growth from Poyac. So in Bordeaux, Poyac on the Medoc, one of the recognised communes there. So this is Chateau Grand Prix du Casse, which is a Cinquième Grand Cru Classe, a fifth growth. This is the 2014 vintage of that. So Grand Prix du Casse originates in 1675 when Arnaud Ducasse buys what was described as a modest property next to the Gironde in the town of Poyac itself. Over the next three centuries his family built an estate around this and built the estate's reputation. Arnaud's son Pierre builds up the estate. He buys land in three parishes. So he buys land in Poyac, he buys land in saint sauveur and in Saint Lambert. And in 1820, Pierre's son builds a winery, which means that for decades, Grand Puy du Casse is pretty much the only estate in this part of the Medoc that's vinifying its own wine, that's making its own wine. In 1855, with the classification of the Medoc and Sauterne, so the estate is classified as a fifth growth. At the time, the estate is called Artigues Arnaud, and the estate has 40 hectares of, of vines. Evidently, these are spread over 11 different soil types. They claim the benefit of that is that this is the, the only property that truly shows the entire diversity of Poyac soil types. So the estate's vineyards are divided into three plots. There's a northern section that just lies to the south of Ponte Carne, Mouton Rothschild and Lafitte. There's a central section that covers the, the Grand Puy Hill, which is a low hill. And then the southern section of vines sits on the, the plateau of Saint Lambert. Much work was done in the 1990s to restructure the vineyards. And I think the emphasis there was to ensure that the Cabernet Sauvignon was growing primarily on the, the silica gravels, the warmest gravels, the most free draining soils, and that Merlot was was being planted on the more sandy gravel soils. Current cepage of the vineyards is about 62% of Cabernet Sauvignon to 38% of Merlot. And average vine age is about 34 years. 2004, ownership of the estate changed as it was bought by CA Grand Cruz, which is a, an offshoot of Credit Agricole, a French bank. And Credit Agricole have been able to invest in the property. Work in the vineyards ensured that by 2007 the estate was certified as, as using sustainable agriculture. And they have plans to completely rebuild the vat room and the barrel cellars. Now the 2014 vintage is, I believe, a blend of 50-50 Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. I say I believe because I have seen a fairly reliable source suggest that the blend is 62% Cabernet and 38% Merlot, but I'm guessing that actually that's an incorrect transposition of the planting in the vineyard. So the other source I've seen says 50-50, but I, don't know. I think I'm trusting that slightly more. The consultant onologist in 2014 was somebody called Hubert de Bouard. Hubert de Bouard, uh, the owner of Chateau Angelus in saint Emilion. 2014 as a vintage didn't start promisingly. There was a wet spring and quite an overcast early summer. However, at the end of August, an Indian summer started and, and conditions were dry and warm right the way through to the end of October. The grapes for Pompey du Casse were harvested between the 1st and the 18th of October. Everything was hand-picked, hand-picked into shallow cages, cagettes, with the idea that the, the fruit is not crushing other fruit beneath it in, in transport to the winery. There was a manual sorting went on in the vineyard and then when the fruit arrived at the winery it was all put through an optical sorter so mechanically taking out any fruit that's undersized, that's damaged, that's the wrong colour, removing matter other than grapes. So this will have been intensively selected pr prior to fermentation. Fermentation goes on in temperature controlled stainless steel tanks and when it came to doing the malolactic conversion for this wine, not everything went through its malolactic conversion in barrel because the 40 hectare estate is quite a large production and that would be quite time consuming. But 30% of the oak used was new. So those new French oak barrels were used to put that portion of the wine through its malolactic conversion in barrel. The rest un underwent malolactic conversion in tank. Everything was then put into barrel. So the French oak, there'll be 225 litre barriques, and everything aged in barrel for 18 months. 
So fairly standard way of producing a Grand Cru Classe with some good elements of selection going on there. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Instantly, I'm certainly seeing it against a, a white surface here. That's a deep, dark, pretty much opaque wine. It's got a sort of a, a, a ruby red colour, certainly a black red. I'm swirling it. The wine has 14% alcohol and it's forming quite generous um, tears on the side of the glass as I swirl it. It's not surprising at all. So let's see what I make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas are quite rich, but we're starting to get a little bit of development. This is a 10 year old wine. So I'm getting some quite heady, sort of plummy, almost prune fruit, but yeah, very red fruit style. But notes of dried leaves, forest floor, sort of developed notes. Perhaps even a meaty aroma. So let's have a taste. medium to full bodied. The alcohol is giving a, a little bit of warmth to the mid palate but it's still within reasonably balanced levels. There's a beautiful, I would almost say sheen across the mid palate. There's a smooth sort of graphite chocolate like texture across the mid palate. There's grainy tannin with you know quite cedary spices both on the attack and into the finish quite grainy but at the same time with a, a lovely richness the alcohol is sort of picking that up quite nicely so you've got cedar and you've got other sweet spices coming in there sort of cinnamon nutmeg those sort of notes just quite delicately and everything's so lovely and smooth it's not quite licoricey there's a, a, a dark fruit it's sort of dark in the way that, that, that something like a blueberry that sort of rich dark fruit is the the acidity is balanced not making the finish particularly juicy. Having gone from the sort of dark fruit core, there's a little bit more of a sort of a red fruit, more towards sort of Loganberry, perhaps boysenberry, but Loganberry raspberry sort of note more on the finish, along with the cedar that's structuring that, giving it some quite good length. I'm not sure this is quite as open as it's going to be in a couple of years' time. I think perhaps a little more patience with this would pay some dividends. But the beautiful texture, I mean, yes, it's got some. Uh, some spicy grip from the tannins, but actually the lovely smooth texture, the sort of chocolatey graphite notes through the, the mid palate are very attractive. There's a nice ripeness, there's no leafiness, you know, there's no element of um, tobacco leaf or anything like that in the in the notes. I, I mean, I'm saying there's no leafiness, there's no fresh leafiness. There's a, I'm talking about the developed aromas that are not so obvious on the palate, actually. Those have yet to, to come through to that stage. And yes, there's a nice presence in the mouth and a nice richness, but I, I don't think the finish is quite as open as I'd like yet. I'd suggest giving this wine a bit, a bit, bit more time. Looking at the Wine Searcher aggregated score, that comes in at 90 on this. I, I think probably that's pretty fair for where the wine is at the moment. But actually, I think on reassessment in a couple of years' time, I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two critics increase their score one or two marks. I, th I, th I think that's got the potential to exceed that ranking ever so slightly. So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. If you'd like to watch more of these tastings, the best answer is to sign up and follow us on, on YouTube. That would be fantastic if you could do that. And that way you can set a notification to make sure that you're alerted when we publish a new tasting. If you have any comments you want to leave, please pop those in the box below. We'd really like to hear what you think about the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to that. If you have friends you think would like to see the video, please do forward it to them. I will leave a link to the page on the Wine Searcher website that tells you about Grand Prix du Cast 2014, and there you'll, able, you'll be able to see where it's available in your market, what price it's at. There will be other detail there if you, if you look at the profile tab, and also there's a price history and the various critics reviews are available to look at there. So thank you again for joining us and do please try and take some time and come and join us for another tasting in the near future won't you. Thanks again, bye for now.